All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and honor and glory be to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rukhak Wadash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and blessings to the whole and elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the flock and the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And speaking of the last days, which we are definitely in, all right, if you're measuring the time diligently, uh, which the scriptures say that we are supposed to do, you know, when you shall be seeing earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, you know, and we're seeing these things. That's second Ezra is the ninth chapter. But then also Matthew 24, all right, when the Lord told the disciples the things to look out for before the signs of his return. All right, but before Yahweh comes, you know, Esau is going to get more draconian. You know, with his rules, regulations, legislations, you name it, all right? And um, he's pretty much, he's he's closing off the ring, so to speak. Okay. And, um, you know, and I just wanted to do a, a quick lesson here on, a, on an article that I came across. You know, as, as I was, uh, you know, doing some research today, you know, because we, we watch, we watch to see what's going on in the news. Um as we are commanded to to watch all right uh the scriptures tell us clearly in isaiah 62 and 6 it says i have set watchmen upon thy walls O Yerushalayim, we shall never hold their peace day nor night all right so you know we're supposed to be watching and we're not supposed to hold our peace that means if we say something that we gotta you know we, if we see something we gotta say something basically you know because that's the job of a watchman, a diligent watchman at that. All right. And Lord willing, we are those diligent watchmen. All right. Starting with the apostles and the elders on down, you know, that have taught us the right way. You know, and the true doctrine according to, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai through the spirit. Okay. Uh, which we believe in wholeheartedly. Okay. Because the scripture says the wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability of our times and strength of salvation. So this wisdom and knowledge that we've acquired through the spirit in these last days is very, very important to us. OK, and that's why as we have it, you know, our job is to pretty much occupy till the Lord comes, which is to maintain the business of the Lord. When you go into the word occupy, it means to main business, maintain the business of the Lord. OK, and that's why we don't hold our peace day nor night, meaning what you can pretty much tune in. Any time of the day, you can see videos being premiered, videos going live, and nothing but pure edification is coming out and flowing, you know, from the men that the Lord has set up to teach this word, starting with the apostles and the elders on down. All right, and that's evident and it's plain to see. And they don't, we don't take no breaks. Okay, the scriptures speak about no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. So this is work, and the Lord is not unrighteous to forget our work and labor of love. All right, it says, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. So those of you that make mention of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we've been commanded not to keep silence. Okay, we're supposed to proclaim that those names. We're supposed to speak the truth. And you know, when you're speaking the truth in, a, in an upside down world, in a wicked society, you know, you're not going to be liked by these people because they're nothing but demons. Okay, but that's okay because the Lord said, blessed are ye. When men shall revile you and separate you from their company, cast out your name as evil. Remember, the scriptures speak about what did they do to Yahweh Shai? And if they, hey, the servant isn't greater than the master. All right, it says, and give him no rest till he establish, until he make your Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And we definitely are not a praise in the earth right now. All right, but Esau, he's coming with it, man. All right, the sword is being sharpened. And now you've got the FBI involved. For those of you that didn't take the, you know, the devil's serum, you know, Pretty much, Esau's coming for you, and he's letting it know. He's letting it be known. Okay. It's not a shocking uh, accusation. I'm gonna do that. Pause that video there, so that you can see. Now I'm on the FoxNews.com. All right, and um, it says the fingerprints of the unyabbed NYC teachers reportedly sent to FBI, right, with problem codes, invasion of privacy. Now, um, like I said, I'm on Fox News. This is dated February the 14th. All right, what's the date today? We are, and so that was three days ago. All right, and like I said, I just I just came across this today. 
So I just said, hey, I've got to do a video on it because Esau, you know, he's coming forward. Hey, that's why I hope I held that scripture, Revelation 12 and 12. He's coming with it. Okay. Uh, it says, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So this man, he knows he has but a short time. So he's coming down with that great wrath. You best believe it, man. All right. When, we, when scripture says the devil, the, the word devil means a slanderer and a deceiver. And that's Esau. Okay. He's the, he's the ultimate deceiver on the face of the earth. All right. Even when you just take one aspect of his deception and you look at how he's set himself up to be his image, to be up as the, as the Most High and his son. When the scriptures clearly tell you what the, uh, the, the Most High looks like, what his son looks like. Yahweh Shai, he looks like his father. And Yahweh Shai is a so-called black man from the tribe of Yahweh. All right. The scriptures tell you the description of Yahweh Shai and how he looked in Revelation 1 and 13. Feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. So my, you know, my question to Esau is, who is that imposter? Or who's that devil that they got painted up in there? Was it the 16 Chapel? You know, and they put the most high. You know, I think the, the painting is the finger of God. Let me see if I can get a picture of it. Uh, <clears throat> finger of God. Okay. Let me see if I can get this. Finger of God. All right, this is by a, a fresco painting, all right, by Michelangelo. All right, so this is nothing but Renaissance art, man. And they got the audacity to put the most high in like a pink, in like a pink frock sort of thing. All right, and this is supposedly the creation of Adam. This man is, see, this is this, is this devil, man. All right, and then he also puts pictures of the angels you know, as little babies with wings and little and their rods hanging out. This man is a, is a straight. This shows you how his spirit is not upright in him. This this alone shows you that. Look at the very nature of these paintings. Man showing his nakedness. You got the, You can't tell me that's not Renaissance art, man. All right, this is this is complete blasphemy, and this man's gonna have to pay for this. That's why the scripture says in Job nine and twenty four, the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So going back to this, um, <clears throat> you know, to this article right here, you know, you know, Esau is moving because he know. Hey, remember, he's been loose. He dealing with the Renaissance. The word Renaissance means rebirth. He's been loose for a little season, right? You can find that in Revelation the twentieth chapter. Okay, because he was bound for a thousand years. And the scripture says that after that, he shall be loose for a little season. So we're in that time of his little season of his rulership on the earth. And that's why you're seeing him come hot and heavy with these legislations and these decrees and unrighteous decrees. All right. And pretty much sending the, uh, you know, sending reports and problem codes linked to the teachers that haven't lined up to take the Vaseline. All right. A clear invasion of their privacy. Well, it's not going to stop at the Yab. It's going to continue on to the MOTB, which is the CHIP. All right. If you can receive it. All right. So we're coming to the time where pretty much Esau is just going to say, look, we forget sending your codes to the um, to the FBI. If you don't line up and take the CHIP, then it's off with your head. OK, it's his fingerprints of the unyapped in New York City teachers were reportedly sent to the FBI with a problem called flags. Right. Prompting outrage from former educators who lost their jobs over the mandate. So you gonna you have, you have people losing their jobs over this, okay? They're losing their jobs over this mandate, man. All right. Um, let's look at the word mandate. It says mandate, an official order or commission to do something, the authority to carry out a policy regarded as given by the electorate to a party or candidate that wins an election. All right. So he has the authority to carry Kawhi because the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. And that's why he's decreeing these unrighteous decrees. Let's get Isaiah chapter 10 and 1. All right. This is then this devil is not going to stop at this. He's going to keep on going. All right. Until he um, he pushes out that CHIP. All right. They're already talking about, you know, I've been seeing the videos about Donald Trump wanting to bring back the guillotines and the death penalty. You know, so they're really flirting with this idea of putting people to death. For not adhering to the uh, demands of the government.
All right, which is that's that's draconian measures. Remember, the word draconian means excessively harsh or severe. All right, so this is Isaiah chapter ten verse one. It says, "Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousness which they have prescribed." So you see, you know, when, let me read it in the NLT as well. What sorrow await? What sorrow awaits the unjust judges and those who issue unfair laws? You see that? So this is Esau, and this is what he's about. This is what he's doing. All right, and earlier I made the statement he's cutting off the ring. That's like a boxing terminology, and he, and pretty much, you know. Everyone's back is about to be against the wall And everyone's going to have to make that choice That's why the scriptures speak about the hour of temptation Which shall come upon all the world To try them that dwell upon the earth And like I said, it's just a quick video going into this Because I just came across it now uh, I'm going to go ahead and play you um, a little bit of the um, the video here Let me see if it will work on this link In New York As the city reportedly flagged the fingerprints Of its unvaccinated teachers To the FBI An attorney representing those educators Is talking about it in federal court Listen to this When the, the city puts these problem codes On employees who have been terminated Because of their unconstitutional so they, got, they got problem codes attached to them Okay and they're linked You know to the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation All right so they have problem codes. So when they go to apply for a job, these problem codes flag up because, you know, some of these jobs, they actually ask you, you know, have you been in trouble with the law or, or whatever? You have to do like a like a check to see what kind of citizen you are in society. Are you a law abiding citizen or are you just a rebel? So these problem codes are being attached to these teachers. OK, and well, let's play some more policies not only do they have this flag in their files but their fingerprints are sent with that flag to the fbi and the new york criminal justice services so it impacts their ongoing ability to get employment at other places you see that man and that's why ultimately this is why there's going to be riots this is why there's going to be you know one people standing up to fight against another this is why the scriptures speak about these things in second is just the 15th chapter because you're going to have civil unrest because this ain't going to stop with just teachers all right, this is going to continue and continue and continue until pretty much it's going to be by penalty of death to the point where it's off of your head, you know, if you don't take the CHIP. Ultimately, it's coming down to the point where they're going to push out the CHIP and he calls it all. All right, and to hell with some, some guys, some Johnny come lately that don't understand what's being taught about the true doctrine, that don't understand what the MARK is. Revelation 13 and 16, and he calls if all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. This is everybody. Okay, you link to this city, you, you know, you have to do things in the city, this and that and whatever. You are going to have to be faced with that choice, all right? Whether to pretty much take the MAR case is to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, all right? That's a physical thing. The Apostle John was shown this on the Isle of Patmos. All right, and people were lining up the same way you see people that were lining up, right, outside these national health services centers, you know, to take the Vaseline is the same way they're going to be lining up, right, in the beginning to receive the CHIP. Okay, but then it's going to get to a point where they're just going to have to set up these stations. All right, and anyone that refuses to, re to, to receive it, you know, they're pretty much going to be put in detention centers. Okay, it's going to be on some like handmaidens tell type shit. It's going to be on some, you know, like children and men out here, like the road. It's going to get real bad, man. That's why the scriptures speak about Jacob's trouble. And this is why we're, we're blowing the trumpet. We're warning. Okay, the scriptures speak about if the, if the trumpet shall give an uncertain sound. You know, excuse me. How should the people make themselves ready to the battle? It says to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy it or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So you ain't going to be able to buy or sell. Okay? You ain't going to be able to get a job. You ain't going to be able to do this. You ain't going to be able to do that. You ain't going to be able to go from one place to another. Like I said, they're going to be setting up these chipping stations. All right? So all hell is about to break loose, man. Okay? Because you're going to have a lot of people that ain't going to stand for this. And they're going to take to the streets. And then that's what Esau wants. Or the web KO. So when people start rioting, protesting against this, against his draconian measures, what are you going to have? You're going to have people that are going to be getting gun bucked by troops out there on the streets. All right. This is uh, 2nd Ezra 15. 
All right, which we should already know these, the, you know, these, um, these chapters here. All right, because this is the time that we're coming into. All right, and I'm going to start from verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. And that's going to be a time and a half, man. That's going to be, remember, the, the scriptures speak about a time like no other since there was a nation is coming upon the earth. All right, Jacob's trouble, man. All right, uh, the next chapter over speaks about how they're going to be like madmen sparing none. All right, so Esau is going to have his troops rolling out, man. You know, um, and grabbing people up. You know, you Israelites that didn't want to hearken unto the voice of the Lord through his, his men, his, his prophets that he set up on the earth to teach his word, to blow that trumpet. You're going to get caught up out there. You're not going to have the wisdom and knowledge to keep you stable in these last days. Okay, you're not going to be protected. All right, hey, but as for the elect, you know, we, 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 we rely on scriptures like Psalms 91. We rely on scriptures like Psalms 34 and 7. The angels of the Lord encampeth about them that fear him and delivereth them. Not to say that we ain't going to go through the time of trouble, but hey, we're going to, the elect are going to be looked after. They're going to be taken care of during that time. All right, wouldn't you rather be defended rather than defenseless? In fact, I've got a scripture uh, in Proverbs, um, I believe it's 18 and 10. <clears throat> it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Okay, so the, we're going to be safe in the hands of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. All right, yeah, we're going to be tested. Yeah, we're going to go through some some gruesome things. But at the end of the day, even if we die serving the Lord, the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. So we're, ultimately, we're going to be safe. Yeah, the scriptures speak about the righteous shall scarcely be saved. But guess what? They're still going to be safe. You know? So that's something that we always have to meditate on and remember. No matter how bad things get out here, the righteous are going to be safe. They're going to, the Lord is going to have his continual oversight over his elect. Back in 2nd Ezra 15 and 15. For the sword and the destruction joy of night, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. Yeah, like the children of men, like the road, you know, factions, gangs. You know, people ganging up with their own race or whatever, their own communities, coming up against other people, taking what they have. People, it says, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. Right? They shall not regard their kings nor princes. Right? And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So, you know, the government, they ain't going to regard the government in that day, man. You know? These so-called kings that have been set up and elected to make decisions about your life and telling you and make announcements and tell you. They ain't going to listen, man. Ain't no one going to be listening to them in that time. And that's exactly what Esau wants. Remember, they have a saying, a phrase, ordo ab chaos. They want order from the chaos. And we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, man. You see how they were, you know, pushing out the fear and saying, look, if you don't, you're going to die. If you don't take the yab. If you don't take the Vaseline, then all of a sudden people started taking it. Now they, they're having to admit you've got people that worked for these big pharmaceutical companies that are pretty much blowing the whistle on them and saying, look, they were really taking people out. Half people's, people's faces going paralyzed, half their face going blood clots all over the place. It's crazy, bro. That's why the scripture says in Sirach 12 and 10, never trust thine enemy, man. All right, so we ain't supposed to trust this devil, no matter what he comes with. Because remember, he's he's comes with slick words, but the scriptures speak about the nature of this devil. He's a slick bastard. Psalms fifty five and twenty one. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. So Esau's preparing for war against the Israelites, man. Okay, and he's about to show you. You know, about that perpetual hatred that he has had. And that's why the Lord's not going to show him no mercy. Because he's shown nothing but hatred towards us. A perpetual hatred. An everlasting hatred. So he's pursuing us with his sword. And the blessing of Esau is his sword. It says his words were softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords. And what's Esau's blessing? Genesis 27 
And I believe it's from verse 38 on down. It tells you that his blessing is the sword. Okay. And he's about to start swinging that sword. And we're telling you through the spirit that the sword is being sharpened, man. Ezekiel 21 and 9. All right. In fact, let's pull that up. All right. This is Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 9. It says, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, say, A sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. So there's a time of slaughter that's coming upon the earth, man. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? So you see Jake in that la da spirit going clubbing and, and, you know, lining up in the queue to go clubbing and. In that in that Barker's spirit, that Bacchanalia's spirit, you know, getting intoxicated and sloppy drunk, and the women too, out there acting a damn fool, you know, doing cartwheels because they're watching the Super Bowl and their favorite team wins or or loses, and they have a tantrum. It's all distractions. The bread and circuses is coming to an end. Should we then make mirth? You see, while you're having mirth, Esau is out there sharpening that sword. Okay, and if this doesn't prove it, then, you know? Rochelle Garcia and Michael Kane, two New York City teachers who were fired over the COVID mandate and investigative reporter Betsy Combier join us now. All three of you, thank you for getting up with us this morning. But Rochelle, I want to go to you first. Um, you were fired for refusing to get the COVID shot. And she, you know, she looked like a, like a Israelite woman, this Rochelle. But listen to what she says. And she got fired, man. You know? Well, she had enough sense not to line up and take the, the devil's serum. You know? And you even had, you know, the president even coming out and speaking. And blacks, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Well, he said blacks. He didn't say Negroes. He said blacks. Hispanics, Native Americans. I remember they were pushing it for Jake Hard. Here it is. It was called, it was called the Wuhan thing. Then all of a sudden, it was Jake was the main carriers of it. All right. So you see what they, you know, what they're lining. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Second Corinthians two and eleven, I believe. All right. So we got to watch, man. Um, does this mean because in the state of New York, it's a law for anyone who deals with children, they have to get their their fingerprints. Taken. Does this mean that you are being flagged to the FBI? Um, that's what it looks like. And um, for me, this is uh, both outrageous and infuriating because my first question to to the government or whatever is, is basically, what did I do? What kind of criminal activity did I participate? So now she's now logged. She's got a problem code linked to her fingerprints, her biometrics. All right, which they even want to do away. Really, they just want to put the chip out there, man. Right, it's going to go from the, from people actually being able to speak out and say, what did I do? Da -da 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 -da. Like this Rachel Garcia here. It's soon it's going to get to the point where they're just going to gun buck you and, and, and take you out, man. You know, because that's the time that we're coming to. The time of Jacob's trouble. All right. And that's that sword being sharpened. This is Jeremiah chapter 30. And I'm going to start from verse 5. It says, For thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. All right? So this ain't about smooth things, peace and safety. That's peace and safety spirit. That murfed out spirit is through, man. Okay? This is a serious time. All right? It's a serious time. Okay? It says, ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. So men are going to be as women, man. So if the men are going to be like women, then what are the women going to be doing? See, like she's able to say her piece. She's, you know, she's Rachel Garcia. She's out there saying what she's got, got to say about the government and how she's lost her job and this and that. But guess what? There's going to come a time where it's just going to be no more talking. Esau just, remember that great wrath is coming because he knows that he have but a short time, man. Okay, it says, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And how is it, how beautiful is it to know you know, that we know what's going to happen before it actually happens, that the Lord has given us 
you know, we of the hopeful elect, he's given us the the foresight to be able to see what's going to happen before it happens, man. That's mercy in itself. All right. And we pray that the Lord keeps keeps that, um, you know, uh, that ability for us to be able to see what's going on, you know, as we, you know, diligently uh, do the job of a watchman as we are supposed to do. All right. We know that Jacob's trouble is coming. We know it's coming and it's going to be a time on the earth like, like, like no other. Like Daniel 12 and 1 says, it's going to get so bad that Michael, the archangel, is going to have to come with Yahweh Shai, man. And Yahweh Shai is going to have to beam us off the earth on a, on a gigantic so-called UFO, on a gi gigantic ship. And he's going to beam up his elect on a one big ship. Okay. Let's prove that in uh, Matthew 24. And you know, Yahweh Shai is only coming back for the elect of the nation of Israel. To hell with what anyone else believes. Hey, the scripture says, for what if some shall not believe? Don't worry about them. Okay, they're going to find out when they're still on the earth and the chariots come and beam up the elect and they're still down here to fry. They're going to understand. All right, because the land of America, Babylon the Great, is about to be turned into a lake of fire, man. Through the nuclear missiles. Okay, and the laser beams from the chariots. The scriptures tell us in Isaiah 9 and 5, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. All right? And what do you think is going to be administering that fire, that burning and the fuel of fire, the nukes and the laser beams from the chariots? Okay, so Yahweh Shai is coming back with power. Let's read it. It says, Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see... So there's going to be a time of great mourning upon the earth. When they see Yahweh Shai, these people out here are going to be running around like headless chickens, man. You know, some people are going to be going into shock. Some people are going to piss themselves on the spot. Some people are just going to have seizures. You know, you could just imagine it. You can see the chaos. All right. That's what it's when it, all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. It's, that's what it says. It says, and they shall see the son of man, which is Yahweh Shai, the one that the world ignorantly calls jesus christ and he's not a so-called white man with blonde hair and blue eyes no he he doesn't have leprosy okay he's a so-called black man from the tribe of judah an angry so-called black man is going to pierce these clouds man on some general zod type shit real talk some bright burn stuff okay it says the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So he's coming back as a, remember, he said he's not going to meet Esau as a man. All right. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. The elect of the nation of Israel. Okay. Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord, Yahweh, power of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. Who are the Lord's people? The Israelites. All right. And this, uh, this, this woman right here, she's an Israelite, man. And she had enough sense not to take, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Vicky venom. You know? But you're going to, it's like I said, you're going to get to, it's going to get to a time. Where they're just going to be like madmen sparing none. You think they're going to give a damn of what, what people like this have to say? Israelite women, men have to say, like, standing up. And I've got a voice. And they ain't going to give a shit about what you've got to say. When they send the troops out, you know what? Let's get, let's get 2nd Ezra 16 and um, 70. It says, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen sparing none. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. You see that? That's how they're going to be moving. Okay? Coming for you, Jakes, man. Those that fear the Lord. You Israelites. They're going to be coming for you. They're going to be like madmen. The spirit of death. They're going to be. There's not going to be no reasoning with these men. The Lord is going to put a spirit of death upon these men. To go house to house. Like in the purge. Clearing out tower blocks. Clearing out churches. Clearing out all these buildings. Okay, and there's going to be no rules, complete anarchy. It's going to be a search and destroy mission. All right, and Esau's got robots, he's got drones, all kinds of stuff, technology that he's going to unleash on you Israelites, man. Oh, okay. So there ain't going to be no fucking mirth 
you know, Murph, there ain't no Murph time now, let alone look at the, uh, the earthquakes, the wars, rumours of wars. Look what's going on in the world. And the, you, you there in, in the spirit of Murph. And they even show you in one of the purges, the purge, they even show you that Jake was just partying. Even though the purge was going on, Jake was just partying or people were just dying. So Esau knows how to, you know, you, you niggas, you're just simple, man. He says, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. So they're going to be dragging you, your daughters, you know, your wife out of beds, out of houses, man. You know? Dragging you along the floor by your ankles, whatever. Casting you, putting you in the trucks. Like in A Handmaiden's Tale, the movie. In the first scene, they, they showed you that. Just pack you in trucks like sardines, stacked... Like, and it ain't no... Esau did that to us in slavery with cargo slave ships. So what do you think he's going to do in these last days? It's going to be worse than that. Okay, the time that's coming is going to be the worst time on the earth. You know? So it's nothing new for, for Esau to just put you, put you in these vessels of transport and pack you in like sardines on top of each other. Because he's already done that in history. Not too long ago, my I add. So this is the devil that the Bible speaks of. But you guys, you simple niggas out there, you want to trim your ways to seek love. It says, then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. And that's the elect, man. You know, they're going to be found to be the chosen of the Lord. All right. Electos. Okay. Chosen, handpicked by Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So that's the elect. And we're going to be tried. All right, it says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, say of the Lord, Behold, the days of trouble, there you go, the days of trouble, are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. He is chosen and will be delivered. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh is your guide. So we have this wisdom and knowledge, man. All right, and that's why we don't give him no rest, because we need to keep on sounding the alarm, blow the trumpet, do what the Lord told us to do, that we may find have mercy in these last days that the lord protects us in these last days man because this is deadly serious all right and women like this they ain't going to be able to have no platform or stand out and give their say real soon okay so um you know um this is early this month john bursch who is present is representing the teachers who are suing the city over the mandate Said teachers who refuse the shot now have a flag in their file, which will impact their ability to get another job. So Esau is making moves and he's just coming out open with it now. He ain't, you know. So, you know, it's there, man. You know, this is the time that we're in. Okay, we're coming to them times, very serious times indeed. You know, that's why we have to stay watching, stay prayed up. And, um, you know, I'm going to close out. To the next time, I'm going to say shalom.